Okay, what we're talking about today is the specifications for the Mr. Manhole repair. We want to cover each aspect of this repair uh, so we know what we're doing, how we're doing it, and the materials we're using to affect the repair and uh, make sure that these repairs are done the same way every time. So it's important that we understand the drawings, the material requirements, and, and the sequence of events. So we find the pre-existing condition where the manhole frame and lid is lower than the asphalt surrounding it. And we're trying to correct that by removing the manhole frame and lid using the Mr. Manhole Cutter Extractor. After removing the manhole frame and lid from the road and the surrounding road overcut is removed, and we want to make sure we get a full penetration vertical cut on this removal process. A lot of times when people use an air hammer, in fact in almost every case, they will have this cut sloped like this as opposed to being vertical. And what happens to those repairs is as freeze and thaw occurs, lateral force is pushing into that conical repair and it causes that repair to raise up out of the ground. You see that a lot where the concrete is actually raised. And if you think about it, in a frost condition, when you've got a quarter of an inch frost movement and it affects this repair, it's also going to affect the road surrounding. And so you would never notice a properly done repair moving. Even though it might move up and down a little bit, it will move at the same rate the surrounding road moves. The reason this will move at a faster rate is because of lateral frost expansion from the surrounding asphalt. So it's very important to get a full vertical cut even below the asphalt pavement. The existing aggregate has to be trimmed straight down and that's what the Mr. Manhole cutter extractor allows you to do. At the same time you'll notice this three inch over excavation below the top of the cone very important so that we have drainage away from the bottom of the concrete repair and after we excavate that down further on in the repair process we're going to add a little aggregate back in there so we've got a nice drainage bed away from this repair also if you've got a mud situation which it's pretty rare most of these are back filled with stone all the way to the bottom of this manhole structure if you find one that has mud in it at this level, we need to auger down with a six inch auger. We usually just carry one of those on the truck and it'll have about a three foot bit on that. You can auger down till you get to the stone and then fill that hole, that augered hole. You fill that with number 57 stone, a three quarter inch aggregate, so that it will allow this area right below the repair to drain away and it's important that we get water to drain away from that repair if you have standing water under that repair you've got more of a chance of frost heaving it up and down in frost conditions that's why we put the bentonite seal in that water activated seal right on top of the cone in case we get a little frost movement and there would be some water present which typically when there's frost there's no running water, but just in case we have that water activated strip in there, to keep that interface from leaking. So let's move on over here and work through this thing. Here we have the repair excavated and cleaned, and now we're ready to start the repair. I might address the top of the cone. Now, this drawing shows kind of a perfect world situation where the cone is nice and flat it's constructed of precast concrete and that's great and a lot of times you will encounter that sometimes though you'll find one where the top of the cone has a little divot or a depression in it or it might even have a hump of some sort what we recommend is putting your insert liner piece down on the cone initially 
and checking to see if you've got a high spot or a low spot and then taking actions like grinding or filling to rectify that situation before you start the rebuild. The other thing that needs to happen at this point, you need to clean the concrete off. If we're dealing with precast concrete, you want to make sure that none of the old sealants which had bonded the previous rings down or mortars or any of that are there. You don't want any residues on that cone. So we'll wire brush that, we'll use an acetone to clean it up real well, wipe it down with a clean rag, make sure that it has no humps or divots, and then we'll start our rebuild. If it's a masonry structure, now you've got to pick an appropriate level to take the masonry down to because there's no clear line of demarcation between the cone and the chimney section. You'll have to pick one so that you've got a a decent sized piece of liner in there. You're shooting for five plus inches of liner material. So if you've got a seven inch casting and lid apparatus and five inches of liner material, that's going to put you roughly 12 inches below the road. And that's pretty much what we're shooting for typically. So you find the appropriate masonry joint to go to, remove enough material to get to that joint, and then you may have to grind the masonry flat so you've got something to start on. Now, in a situation where you've got a masonry manhole that cones out rather quickly, you may find that you're down in this area when you, so you're getting bigger than your liner once you get down to the level you're going to go to. What you want to do there is take a precast concrete ring, about a two inch height concrete ring, and you'll make a reducer out of that. And you'll grout that to the top of that cone, and then you'll start your rebuild off of that precast.